Hey guys, hope you all have been well. Welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to be doing the next guide to MAC, and it's going to be, what am I doing? Uh, it's going to be on lip liners, and I know that a lot of you have had lip liner questions in the past, and lip liners for MAC is one of their strong points. With all brands, there's hit and miss categories, and with MAC, lip liners are a hit. I am only going to be going with their wooden pencil formula because that is the most popular, most well known. So I wanted to put that out there in case you're interested in like their pro long wear or any other types that they have available. So if you're on the hunt for a MAC lip liner, you don't know which one you want to get. Do I want peachy undertone, mauve undertone, pink undertone, red undertone, brown? If you're wondering about those things, then I hope you decide to stay tuned because I'm going to get straight into the guide. I'm going to start off with the chocolate or brown lip liners, and I have two to show you. Some lip liners are going to have that brown shift to them, but these are true brown shades. So first off, we have here, this is Cork, my personal favorite lip liner from MAC. I've spoken about it a thousand times, but this is kind of a yellow base. I don't know if you can see that. Very reminiscent of like a milk chocolate shade and then you have chestnut here which happens to be another chocolate shade but more of like that purple undertone. Now depending on your complexion you might want to go with either or. Obviously I have both but if you want to pick the one that you think you can use regularly I would say this would be from lighter skin tones up to about an NC95. Now that's just personal recommendation. The lighter you are the darker this is going to appear on your lips and then obviously the higher you go it, it kind of blends in a little bit better into the skin tone. Now if you're a darker complexion or maybe you're an NC35 and cork is a little too light for you you want something richer this is when you go to something like chestnut chestnut is normally not a shade I go towards a lot I will use it as you can see from my makeup looks every now and again but cork I feel is more appropriate for my skin tone I range from about an NC 35 to 37 and this still shows pigment on my lips you can see the contrast between my natural lip color and the lip liner. So I personally would go for this if you have similar complexion to mine. And these liners I feel works best with nude lipsticks. So it's almost as if you're trying to replicate a 90s lip look where you have a brown lip liner and then you apply a nude lip in the center, blend them together, add a lip gloss on top, and it's, it's sort of this contoured beautiful lip if that makes any sense. Okay, let's move on to some neutral plums and purples. This is also inclusive of mauves. So let's start off here. We have the ever famous oral. Moving down, we have spice. Here we have plum. And lastly, we have half red. In my opinion, whirl is a true mauve. But obviously, they do all fall under like the neutral natural. It's not true color. It's, it's subdued. So whirl is the mauve. And then here we have spice. Spice does have mauve, but the, the pink is a lot more evident than I would say whirl is. So if you are a pink mauve wearer, then I would... I would go with spice as opposed to whirl. Next up we have plum. Plum is your go-to lip for a muted down vampy look. If you like the look of vampy lips but maybe the way that we normally think of it is too much for you, I would go with something like plum because it does have that neutral brown undertone so it will mute down the vampy look for you if you want something not as um, in your face. And then lastly we have half red. If you have whirl, I don't think you need half red but if you don't have either and are trying to go between the two, whirl still shows up on my lips but I feel like this is just a much richer color. I know how popular Whirl is and if you're lighter complexion here is what you go with but there's I in my opinion there's more pop and a bit more purple as opposed to mauve in um, half red than than Whirl has. Following up is the peach brown or peach neutral tones and this first one here we have stripped down 
and here we have Hover. In my opinion, they kind of fall under the same color family. There is more red, a red undertone to Hover, but it's also deeper in color. So Strip Down does show on my complexion. I think by the time you reach about an NC40, this just starts to turn into like lip color as opposed to contouring the lips. So I would go with Hover if you have a deeper complexion. I personally like Hover better than Strip Down. Strip Down I would use for like a peachy or nude, like a, a cleaner lip look without like the contour. But Hover is just as beautiful to do that contouring without just kind of that stark brown look if you want something with just a bit more color, I would go with Hover. All right, moving right along, we're gonna go into the brown reds. The first one here is in burgundy, and this one here is in mahogany. Mahogany did come out with the Patrick Star collection, I think his first launch, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they're basically the same thing. They're predominantly brown with more of a red undertone. When you first look at it, it's not like I see red is like that mixture. You can really see the blend of both. If you are a lighter complexion and are into this kind of color scheme, that red brown, then I would go with uh, burgundy. And again, I'm NC35 to NC37. I think upwards of like NC45. I think by 45, it's gonna it's gonna blend a little bit more easily into the skin and not show as vibrant as like a true red brown. So that's when you might want to start thinking of reaching into uh, mahogany here. Next up, we're going to move into the red undertone family because I don't have a true red anymore. I got rid of, I think I had two shades at one point. But for today's video, we're going based off of actual physical swatches. So this first one here, we have Auburn. Next up, we have Chicory. And lastly, we have Beet. They all have a hue of red to it, which is why they're kind of placed in the same category. Now, Auburn is a brick red. It's, it's orange, red, brown. And so if your idea of an everyday red is brick red or like a browned down red, then Auburn, I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Next up, we have Chicory. Now, Chicory, it's, it's questionable on where you want to place it. This can be considered a neutral color. It could be placed with the neutral category but there is red to it which is why I wanted to place it here I, I kind of want more of like that undertone more centralized theme and this definitely does have red underneath it so let's say let's call this a neutral muted wearable red lastly we have beet beet is the magenta red i don't own any other bright lip liner from mac other than this and if you have that berry lipstick and you you want to refrain from feathering then i would suggest beet as your go-to lip liner it goes beautifully with berry lipsticks and lastly we have the neutral pinks here i have the ever famous store like there's certain shades that you just you know you've heard before so we have soar and we have dervish soar is i think in my opinion more pink it comes off more pink on the lips but there also is that mauve hint to it so in my opinion it could have gone in like the mauve pink category can go between and then we have dervish which is like a true pink I would like to make note that Dervish on my complexion, it almost fades into nothing. Sometimes when I want like a light pink look and I put this on, it's just, it, it doesn't do what I want it to do. But when I do put it all over the lips, it looks fine. It's just not what a lip liner should be doing in my opinion. So if you're my complexion anywhere near a shade darker, don't even think about Dervish. It's just... It blanks out the lips, if anything. Sore is a different story, though. If you have, like, a really good pink lip and you want to create contour without just using too much brown, because, you know, we use a lot of brown for contouring and bronzing and all of that stuff, I would go with Sore. It's going to create a great gradient pink lip. This is what I go to for my pink lipsticks. 
Now those are all the lipsticks that I have physically with me, but I do want to make an effort to go over all the ones that I've owned and I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure that with my older lip liner videos, you'll be able to find swatches of these ones that I'll be talking about. The first one is Boldly Bare. I used to own this in a miniature white sized um, lip set. I forget which collection it came with, but that's where I got it from. And it was a beautiful lip liner. I honestly don't know if I ever repurchased it after using that small one. I will categorize it with the like peachy brown category. So hover and I think it was subculture in the same category and it would fall there. So if you want to look up swatches of those and hopefully I have it down below so you can look up swatches of them. But that lip liner in my personal opinion it fits in that category. Cherry. Cherry is your true red. If you have things like Russian red, ruby woo, and want a lip liner just to refrain from possible feathering, then just go with Cherry. Russian red might be a little too dark for Cherry. I just don't think Cherry is the perfect color for Russian red, but if you're just wanting to stop feathering, then you can use the lip liner. Um, but for ruby woo, Cherry is a great color. I did own Lasting Sensation, and it's, it's like a a bright orange kind of tangerine-ish color. I don't have many lip colors in that color family and so I got rid of it and orange is just not my shade to use on the regular but if you are in for a orange based lip liner then Lasting Sensation is that shade for you. I used to own Night Moth and Night Moth is the true vamp. I'm talking like on the verge of black vamp. It's, it's a deepened, blackened plum color. And if that's your look, that's where you want to go. But just think of a blackened plum. That's what Night Moth is. Oak. I used to own Oak and it does not do anything for my lips, which is why I got rid of it. If you have a fairer complexion and you want your shade in the cork and chestnut family, then you would get Oak. Oak is the shade that you're gonna go with. So I would say oh, anywhere from the beginnings of Max, like lightest foundation up to about an NT30, you can get away with Oak. But once you get anywhere near that, I might even question an NC30 to be honest, but you could try it out. Um, I did get some pigment with Oak, but not what I wanted the pigment to be. So maybe an NC30 is where you, you would want to start looking into cork. But Oak is definitely the brown version for fairer complexions. Stone. I did own Stone once upon a time and it it's a good lip liner but it's very cool tone. It's a true stone color. It's gray. And against my warm complexion, it just, for me, it didn't mesh well. I think the look is beautiful and I've seen it worn um, quite a bit on YouTube and just, you know, things that I see on social media. So if you are into cooler tone lip colors, Stone is a great way to go to create the contours on the lips. However, I would advise that maybe if you're about an NC40 and up, then you might just want to skip stone altogether. It may turn into just be looking ashy on the lips. So you might want to give it a swatch if you know the stores are open, if you have access to the store. But uh, in my opinion, by the time you hit about an NC40, it, it might start looking a little ashy. I need to make a correction. I think I said subculture instead of strip down when I was talking about boldly bare. And I just, I want to, I want to correct that. A strip down was the swatch that I had for you. It wasn't subculture. Subculture I did own, however, and in my opinion, just the simplest way to put it, uh, subculture is your neutral pink. Subculture didn't look like much on my lips, which is again why I got rid of it. Sort of the same idea with Dervish, like it's it's almost nothing on my lips where dervish is like pink and subculture is a neutral pink. And lastly, we have vino. Vino is a vampy. It's a deepened red. It's sort of the red version of night moth. Night moth is a vampy purple and vino is a vampy red. So depending on your color choices of your vampy look, you would choose between the two. 
And that is it. That's my guide to the MAC Lip Liner Collection. But I really do hope that you enjoyed it and that it helped you out in any which way. If you have any questions about any of the lip liners, please be sure to leave me a comment down below and I will try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, I hope you all are doing well, taking great care of yourselves. I will see you all next time. Bye guys.